Hi everyone, welcome to the CSS3 course. In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, lengths and units used in CSS. Before I discuss these topics, I'm going to show you the web page on the left hand side, together with the uh, HTML code corresponding to the web page on the right hand side. So for the uh, HTML file, I have a number of headings and a number of paragraphs. And I have some IDs and classes for some sections of my web page. So I'm going to illustrate the units and the length issues with these um, identifiers. For example, the IDs and the classes. Okay, the first one to talk about is the length measured in pixels. So let me go to the beginning and, and let me open the style.css file. Okay, this is the CSS file. I have already linked this file to the HTML file. So if I want to specify the length in pixel units, I can have an example here. Suppose I want to change the background width of the first paragraph right here. I can do something like this. So now I have a background color and I'm able to change the background color to a certain width specified by the length in pixel unit. Suppose I change the width of my background to 800 pixels. So what does it mean by that? I can see that I have a scroll bar at the bottom. So the width of the background will be set to 800 pixels. And when I enlarge the window, I'm able to see that the background color has a width of about half of my uh, screen. So you can see that 800 pixels would be about half of my screen size, okay? And when I reduce the size of the window, I will have a scroll bar that helps me show the entire width of my background, okay? So this is one way by means of the unit in terms of pixels. And I'm going to talk about another way by means of the percentage. So what does it mean by that we can go to um, this part corresponding to ID2. Now here, I use a percentage to specify the width of my background color. So what does it mean by that? 45% is simply equal to the portion of the width of my browser window. So this background color has occupied 45% of the width of my fill port. So when I simply enlarge the browser window, we can see that the background color has a width of 45% of the entire fill port, which is actually spanning across my whole screen okay so the percentage will help me specify the width in different proportions according to the uh, fill pot size okay the percentage simply gives me the proportion of my fill pot width. Okay, so this is another way by means of percentage. In addition to specifying the background color in percentage, I'm also able to demonstrate the use of percentage in the font size. So let me go to the other part, which is simply this part. For this part, I have a division called class one. And inside this division, I have a paragraph and a list, which is inside an unordered list. So if I want to demonstrate the percentage in font size, I can do something like this first. I need to specify the font size for the entire division. Okay. 
Okay, we can see that the font size has increased a little bit. You can see that the paragraph together with the list element has a new font size specified by the font size declared in the division. So what does it mean by the percentage used in the font size? I can do something like this now to demonstrate its use. Suppose I want to change the font size of the uh, list item here. I'm going to use a percentage method to do so. Okay, when I simply type 250% as the font size for ID3, I'm able to change my size to such a large font size. And the font size is simply calculated uh, relative to the, the parent element of my list item. So for my list item, the parent element is simply the paragraph shown here. So the font size, which is 250%, is calculated from the 20 pixel size. Okay, so I will simply get 50 pixel size. Okay, the font size is simply equal to 50 pixels. If my parent element, which is the paragraph element, is having a font size of 20 pixels, okay. After that, I'm going to show you another way of specifying the length or the size of my font, which is called relative font size. So I'm going to go to another division. So in this division called ID4, I have a paragraph and after this paragraph, I have a division called ID5, and inside this division, I have another paragraph. And after this one, I have another division called ID6, and inside this division, I have a paragraph. So I'm going to show the relative font size according to the entire division ID4, which contains two more divisions, ID5 and ID6. So I need to set up the font size for my entire division called ID4 first. Okay, you can see that all the characters inside the division called ID4 have turned to its size to 30 pixels. Okay. So if I want to demonstrate the relative font size, let me do so by a change in the font size of my second paragraph and the third paragraph, which are inside two distinct divisions. So now I'm going to specify the font size for this particular element, which is having this selector. First, I need to find out ID4, and then I need to go to um, ID5. Okay. I would like to use a keyword called M which is spelled as em. Em is simply meaning a relative size to the parent element. So the parent element from this current division is simply this um, paragraph element, which is outside or just before the declaration of id5. Okay, now you can see that the font size of my second paragraph has turned to a, be a bit smaller than the previous paragraph and the upcoming paragraph. Okay, so 0 0.7 em means that I would like to get the font size which is relative to my parent element. So for ID5, the parent element is simply uh, the paragraph in ID4. and I can get the relative font size by having the multiplication of 30 to with 0 0.7. So the font size becomes 21 for my second paragraph, which is having an identifier called ID5.
Okay, so this, this is the font size for this particular paragraph. Okay, and I have to mention something here. If the parent element is simply the body element, the value of 1EM is going to mean 16 pixel size. Okay, but for my case here, my parent element is simply this particular paragraph, not the body element directly. So my font size will be evaluated according to the parent element size, which is 30 pixels. Okay. After that, I would like to demonstrate another relative measurement of the font size called REM. REM simply means it is a calculation relative to the root elements, that is the body element actually. So my body element will have the font size of 16, which is a value by default. And if I simply use um, the REM approach, I can do something like this here. Okay, when I simply set up 0 0.7 REM for the font size of my um, third paragraph here, I'm going to get this amount of pixel size, which is obtained by multiplying 16 with 0 0.7, which is simply 11.1 .1 pixels. Okay, so the REM is a measurement relative to the root element. So for my other parts of the web page, uh, before setting up its size, the font size for the elements inside the body was 16 pixels. So after this multiplication, I will get this amount of a font size from my particular paragraph shown here. Okay. In addition to using relative measurement and some kind of absolute measurement in pixels, and also in addition to percentage measurement, I'm going to show you another way of presenting your length relative to your fill port size. So let me go to another part right here. So I have ID7 and ID8. So if I want to set up the width of my element according to the fill port width, I can do something like this here. Okay, you can see that the font size has changed to a bit smaller than before. So what does it mean by that? VW means the fill port width. So I'm going to set up my font size for this element as having 2% of my fill port width. So we can see that the font size is dependent on the fill port width. So for my current browser's window size, the font is something like that small. But if I increase the window size, you see that the font size is also increased due to the VW settings. So 2% of my fill port width can result in such a large character for this particular browser size, okay? So if I reduce the size of the window, the font size becomes that small again. So that's the meaning of the fill port with VW. Similarly, I can have a measurement based on the fill port height. Okay, you can see that the font size for my final paragraph has become that large. Okay, so what does it mean by VH? VH simply means fill port height. When I change the fill port height, I'm able to change the font size. So you see, the fill port height is decreased by my action right now. So when I decrease the browser window height, I'm able to change the font size to be a smaller version than 
the one with a large window height. Okay. So two V simply means two percent of the fill port height. Sorry. So when I enlarge this um, screen a little bit by increasing the browser window height, the font is also increasing its size. So this is a pretty simple summary of the length and unit topics. We can use pixels, which is an absolute size. We can also use percentage, which is a relative size, together with specifying the length in EM or REM units. Also, we can base on our fill port dimensions to uh, set up the length for your elements. VW means fill port width and VH means fill port height. This is the end of the video. If you have any questions about my video, please leave your questions on the comment section below the video. If you like this video, please give me a like and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.